Um, I would like then over the last, the next uh, 20 minutes or 15 minutes if I can, um, again uh, introduce the challenges, but uh, the challenges of how we can best network with people across the Asian Pacific region and hopefully more and more across the Central Asia and the European regions so that we can meet these challenges. Next slide please. Oh no, sorry. Next slide. So, who have we got? We've got a lot of international players, including his Euro-Asian Institute, <laughs> and hopefully including a Euro-Asian uh, research institute that we hope to um, uh, found or establish in the near future. So we have, of course, um, uh, WHO, with its uh, e uh, European, Western Pacific, Southeast Asian, and um, Eastern Mediterranean offices, which are responsible for countries within the Asian Pacific. Now, we, the, the main thing to, to note here from the Asian Pacific, four billion. Two thirds of the world population are in this region. If you, if you um, increase then, if we break, take in Europe as well, then we have a lot more than two thirds of the population. So we have a big problem with cancer across most of these countries that it's increasing. We have this WHO, but WHO, of course, is not focused particularly on cancer. They are much more interested in um, infectious disease, in crises of these type. So we have, in fact, a, an arm of WHO, the international, in red there, the International um, Agency for Research on Cancer. Um, and uh, they are now moving towards International Agency of Research in Cancer Asia um, in the sense that they have hubs. They have one hub in Mumbai, in Tata. I'm afraid they wouldn't agree with your, uh, your uh, estimation of uh, the, uh, the, the, the relative uh, efficiency of the different registries because India has, as you know, a very, very good red cancer registry system and Tata is one of the uh, leading uh, places for that. But anyway, they have this idea, but of course, um, uh, Lyon, the International Agency of Research in Cancer, is limited in their financial resources and the number of personnel. So they welcome, of course, um, input from elsewhere. We have recently, the International Atomic Agency has been trying to become more effective, uh, not only in the treatment, in the, in the radiation, uh, radiotherapy area, but also in the general cancer prevention. UICC, um, I'm sure you've all heard of UICC. It is uh, the biggest NGO for cancer, but it doesn't involve itself with prevention so much a treatment, but much more for the advocacy for patients um, is, is its main um, outcome. And they have, of course, this Asian Pacific uh, Federation for organizations. They have yearly meetings. So I come to the APOCP, sit in here. It doesn't seem to work in any way. Um, we have this organization which, we've, uh, which we established 15, 16 years ago, and we're trying to work together with IARC and with other people in order to help to provide training in different areas of uh, cancer control research. And I've added now an EAI up there in the question mark at the top. This is the Euro-Asian Institute for Cancer uh, Research or Cancer Epidemiology Research, which we hope we will be able to establish over the, the next couple of years. So international, I don't know how many of you have been to IARC. They have a very, very good training program for cancer epidemiology every summer, which I would very heartily recommend. Um, but its mission is to coordinate and conduct research, as we said here, monitor cancer incidents, and basically comprehensively promote uh, worldwide cancer prevention research. But of course, as I say, they are limited in their resources. Um, they are putting particular attention now on a network of cancer registries across the globe, but of course they also want to um, uh, establish an Asian network. Here the, you can see the, uh, the countries with, which have a lot of population-based registries, Japan, Korea, India, you can see very many, and in fact now China there are very many more dots than there are in here. But this, um, this network is uh, one of the main projects for uh, International Asian Research Cancer Research at the moment. So I'm hoping that they will involve themselves more also here. There should be somebody here, but unfortunately because of the visa problems, it didn't manage to get here in time. So this is the local registration center that I talked about earlier. This is one of the focuses of attention so that we can do research into cancer registration, use cancer registry data for many types of research, including screening, etc. 
We have other um, regional offices, as I said, in WHO, but they, they do not focus particularly attention on cancer. There are WHO so-called collaborating centers for cancer in Asia. Um, unfortunately, there are a number here, but the only one that's actually functioning is the cancer prevention screening detection one in Tata in Mumbai. And all of the rest of these here are basically just prestige. They're only there for show. They're not to do anything. And when I, I criticize WHO all of the time, you should not allow these people to have this collaborating center status because they're not doing anything. No website, no activity, nothing. But okay, WHO is WHO and they have their own, um, uh, their own agenda, so to speak. Um, UICC has very many members. But again, they are focusing on one particular area of uh, advocacy and uh, patient, um, uh, um, patient care. Um, so in terms of research potential, they are not in a position to help us in a great deal. So what we did, um, we had the APOCP for 15 years, many, many meetings. We know many, many people. We have 4,000 members across the Asian Pacific. We've published something like um, 3,000, 4,000 papers over the years. Um, so we decided to have this U UICC Asia Regional Office focusing on cancer research and uh, control. Uh, so the idea was to have this UICCR, I was the head for some time. Now, because of the economic downturn, this has basically been shrunk, so it's no longer active. So I want you to imagine in your heads that it's not UICC, this is the Euro-Asian Institute, which will take over these roles. So to look for funding, of course, trying to get money from different places, um, to work together with other NGOs, WH offices, if they are interested. Um, but we are importantly involved in information transfer. We have the Asian Pacific Journal of Cancer Prevention. We have handbooks. Um, we arrange training courses. I have done very many training courses, like I have done this week here, basically trying to help people to uh, do research and uh, publish their papers. We do re research coordination, and we try to intervene. But of course, our research is also very limited. So we have not been able in the past to do as much as we would have liked. Um, however, we hope that uh, we will be able to do more. What we have done, I have this, uh, we made this book, um, A Skeleton Approach to Use of Scientific Language uh, for, for Publication Purposes. We have a number of CDs that, people, that we give to people so that they can um, learn from experience that is being generated um, in the Asian area. So this type of training materials, we hope that we will be able to expand in the future um, in not only English language, maybe Russian language, maybe Chinese, maybe whatever language is uh, most appropriate in uh, the community. And as I said, one of the major activities is this Asian Pacific Journal of Cancer Prevention. And uh, this is a comparison of the International Journal of Cancer and APJCP. Why? Because these are the two journals which are official journals of UICC. And if you look here at the International Journal of Cancer, well, the, the percentage of Turkish, Arabian, Iranian, Central Pakistan, Central Asia, Pakistan, um, India has a few, Thailand, most of the countries in Asia are not represented at all because they don't accept any papers from the non-developed countries. They only accept the papers from the developed world and people who have um, political um, uh, influence. So they do see quite a lot of China, a few from Korea and Japan, but the vast majority of countries, and I don't think there are any uh, recent papers from Russia involved. Whereas the APJCP, of course, has focused attention on trying to provide a um, to provide a possibility for people from these countries to publish their research work. And we think this is very important because if we publish an international journal, then this can be used as ammunition to try to uh, move governments and uh, the ministries of health towards more stress on cancer control for cancer control programs. And we do it all with people. I am um, moving along as quickly as possible. We have a, um, a, tonight, we hope that we'll get as many people together um, over um, um, a bite to eat, uh, where we can discuss the possibility of this uh, Eurasian Institute uh, in the future. So I don't want to take too much time. Uh, we want to prepare ourselves for that this later. But we want to build on the experiences that we've had uh, with the APOCP 
Um, the, you can see people from Japan, India, Max Parkin from uh, IARC, um, uh, many other uh, uh, countries. Uh, and we hope that um, in the future we will have a Eurasian Institute um, um, uh, founding conference, which is in Thailand, and I hope many, many people will come and we will be able to do and continue the, the work that we've done in APOCP, continue with the journal, continue with research. So that to, and along with what you're suggesting, provide training, not so much for the clinicians, it seems the clinicians have a lot of training, but for the, um, uh, the public health specialists to provide more evidence base for cancer control programs across the region. So I'd just like to say, Balshoi Spasiba, for your time, and uh, if you have any questions, please direct them at me. Thank you. So I have to run backwards and forwards, do I? Yeah. Okay, I have my thing, so. Yeah. It's not really a question, it's something different. I am amazed uh, and uh, impressed by today's session because uh, we have such uh, enthusiasts in the audience. You do something amazing. It's a colossal piece of job. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for what uh, you do. And uh, we get a major pleasure in your session. Your intellect, your smartness, your uh, agility, your desire to work, uh, your professional skills amaze us. Please come and come to Russia again. How much do I have to pay? <laughs> Okay, please, please. You see, for being, a, I would say, patriot of Russia and initiator of a few Eurasian programs, like the Eurasian Federation of Oncology, Eurasian Cancer Foundation, and others, uh, my, um, I've heard about this Eurasian Institute initiative previously, but uh, I never had the opportunity to interact with anybody particularly uh, to understand what is it all ab about. Now mm -hmm. I have a better understanding after your talk and after our colleague from Kazakhstan mentioned about that. Um, my question is, uh, yes, I do know that we do have uh, uh, legal issues in our nations. It's next to impossible. It's just impossible to have foreigners on board in uh, NGOs if they are not legally residing in these countries. Mm -hmm. It's the case even with me. Yep. Uh, and uh, so I'm legally there. So far, I'm a resident in this country. Yep. If I leave, I cannot be there on board. Yep. So, um, but uh, I heard about Kyrgyzstan. I'm aware that Kyrgyzstan is simpler. But the point is that I'm sure if we join forces and collectively approach the leaders. Mm -hmm. We can do something. I can see that this initiative started much before we started our Eurasian programs. Uh, in 2000, I saw that in uh, somewhere. No, yeah. this, no, no, that's not quite true. Mm -hmm. We have actually only been, Dr. Nurbek Gigisinov has had a Central Asian Institute okay. for some time, which, with, with which we've been actively working. And um, it was only recently that Anton Bachuk then uh -huh. got involved, and we thought that we would try to use the, the human con uh, connections. Okay. So it hasn't been it hasn't been around for a long time. Okay. It's just something that we we would like. And as you say, Kyrgyzstan allows. It's the only country that I know of, um, mm -hmm. with the exception perhaps of Switzerland, and then you have to be probably in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, allows non Kyrgyz to be members and you don't have to reside in the country either. You can even have a president mm -hmm. who is outside of the country. Mm -hmm. But there are difficulties which we haven't managed so far to be able to overcome, mm -hmm. but we are still hoping that perhaps in the future it will be possible. Okay, one more short yeah. question. Yeah. Is, it, uh, it, is that institute going to be only about epidemiology and all these issues, or are you going to do some, uh, have a basic translational research facilities, or it does, not, does uh -huh. nothing to about? Um, well, at the, in, in the first instance, it will be virtual. 
Okay. Okay, so we will be working, most of the, um, the plans are concerned with training programs. Okay. Now the training programs will not, will be for epidemiology, mm -hmm. but a lot of them will be also focusing on clinical epidemiology, mm -hmm. which is of course what most of the people in this conference will be interested in. And uh, we believe that, um, of course, if we focus more on clinical epidemiology, the pharmaceutical industry, which we, will be much more interested in, um, in supporting us. We, I have very often been asked to participate in, um, in projects which are funded by pharma, but have been given to other, like the George Institute in Australia, mm -hmm. the Economist recently has been doing these, they're, they're using my and my colleagues' expertise to do work that we should really be doing mm -hmm. and getting the money and using it in a far, far more effective way than they do. Mm -hmm. uh, my own opinion, of course, mm -hmm. this is. Mm -hmm. So th this is why we want to, to try. We have all of the expertise. Our um, We have every person who is active in cancer prevention is actually a member of our, in the, the area, is a member of our organization. It's just, unless you have a legal entity, you cannot accept any funding, mm -hmm. and therefore you are very constrained in the types of activity that you can actually be involved in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My last very short question. Uh, so, do, do I understand correctly? So, what it's going to be a virtual institution? Well, we may have an office in Kyrgyz, yeah. Just an office. Well, we don't we don't know yet, but it could okay. be. The idea is we will make use of the facilities. We can. Uh, Nurbek wants to say something, and he will do. Um, mm -hmm. But we, he has a university. He, there, there's the oncology institutes in in uh, um, Almaty. Um, there are other oncology institutes that that we can use. We have the National Cancer Institute in Thailand, but which I use very often there are many many places where we can we can do the the training programs mm -hmm. as long as we have an office somewhere so that in coordination so that we can if we get any funding we can legally accept funding and legally apply that um, support in order to um, to con to do the activities which hopefully will contribute to uh, cancer control thank okay. you thank you, thank you. Uh, Nurbek, would you like to say something in Russian I'll just take a minute of your time, I'll be brief. In fact, this idea of uh, setting a bridge between Asia and Europe, and it is uh, about the use of the best practices, but we will be focusing on uh, research and uh, uh, training, because the life shows that uh, we do not have the proper training level and in fact you showed some in your presentation uh, you uh, showed um, the poor training results uh, and you wanted to extrapolate these results and compare Russia against other countries and in fact we have some cooperations already with the Petrov Research Institute and uh, historically there were more than 26 projects in Asia however the current difference difficulty is uh, we wanted to set up uh, a public foundation however the founders uh, w uh, would be foreign partners, and it is complicated. But now we can simplify the whole layout by involving private individuals. And in this case, we don't have to wait for the response for the Euro uh, Eurasian, uh, excuse me, Asian Pacific region or from other countries, uh, we must collect, let's say, five, seven countries together. And if uh, there is a will to enter uh, the Founders Committee, then uh, it is easy. You just uh, supply the updated uh, uh, Founding Committee's membership, and uh, we can do, uh, we can renew the, or update the uh, uh, founders membership every two years and uh, um, rotate um, the administrative staff uh, staff every four years so, but these are just uh, a theory because we don't have the foundation yet and we talk in um, an abstract language now so I think we need to meet and uh, to finally come up with the idea of how to set up the Eurasian Institute for Cancer Research 
C. And uh, I received some responses from Central uh, Asian countries, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan. They want to enter the Eurasian Institute for Cancer Research. And I hope that our uh, colleagues from uh, Asian Pacific Organization for Cancer Control are ready to um, enter as well, because we need to legalize our organization. And we need a powerful organization which will gradually, um, but um, at the very end, will uh, take um, uh, the task of reviewing cancer treatment recommendations.